Hello, everybody. I am Mr. Gavin. I am an instructor at Museo Art Academy, where we teach a wide variety of great classes, both online and in person for kids and teens. Now, you're probably here because you have never touched Sketchbook before and you want to get familiar with it before you jump into our digital illustration classes. Now, this video is part one of three different lessons in which you will learn the basics of sketchbooks to kind of get you started before you dive into our digital illustration classes. So let's begin. Now, as part one of three, today you will learn just the basics of how to navigate sketchbook. We'll talk about brushes, we'll talk about layers, and we'll talk about some basic functions just to kind of get you started. And parts two and three will focus specifically on layers and on brushes. All right, now for today, you will just need your iPad and you will need some sort of drawing stylus to kind of get you started. You could use your finger, but it might be a little bit challenging. So I definitely recommend having a stylus. All right, so let's begin learning how to navigate Sketchbook. Now, here is the interface for the iPad. Now, keep in mind, this video series is specifically for the iPad interface. So if you are working off a computer or an Android tablet, definitely go check out our other video series that covers the interface for those um, uh, formats. But for this one, if you feel like you need the exact format and layout for you to really understand how to navigate Sketchbook, keep in mind, this is just specifically for the iPad, all right? Now, as you can see, we have our general space for our page, right? On the left-hand side, we have our brush toolbar. On the top, we have our multifunctional toolbar full of interesting and different little uh, functions in which we can play around with our artwork. And on the left-hand side, we have our layers, which kind of act as our pieces of paper, if you want to think about it. Now, on top of using your drawing stylus, you can use your fingers as well, but we'll get into that in just quite a minute. So the first thing we wanna learn is how exactly do we create a new art project? Because you obviously will not be using the same project the entire time as you continue to make art in the future. So in order to make a new project, you go to this icon right here on the top toolbar located all the way at the very left, which kind of looks like a bullet list. All right, so let's click on that. So when we select that, you'll get a new window and get ready for a lot of new windows to open up every time you click something in sketchbook. All right. And right here, you'll see new sketch. And that's how we make a new project. All right. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you'll always be given the option to choose what size you want your project to be. Right now, it's at our default size. And we can also change it either into landscape or in portrait mode. All right. So let's just keep it at the general settings just for this purposes of this lesson. All right. And let's hit create right down here. And it'll ask you if you want to save or discard your current sketch. So I'll just say to save my sketch right now. Okay, it'll save and it'll open up a new project like so. All right, now on the left hand side, we have our brushes. Okay, now these are kind of our shortcut brushes. And if you click right here at the very top, you'll get an option for the entire library of different brushes you can find. All right, so if I scroll through this, there are many different kinds of brushes you can choose from. All right, it's, almost, it's like almost having all the artistic um, tools in the world right here on your iPad, just to explore. Now, these brushes right here are kind of the shortcut ones, just like a basic amount that you'll need to kind of get you started that are easy to grab. Today, we are going to use this brush right here, which is called the fountain pen. Now, anything selected in sketchbook will be highlighted in a light blue box like so. So if I try to select the brush right underneath it, now that will be highlighted. And if I go back, now that'll be highlighted. And if you click on something that is highlighted, you'll open a new window, which lets you choose the functions of that said brush. So the functions that we have are size, and opacity. And opacity is basically the transparency of that brush, how opaque you want it, and then how transparent you want it, depending on where you slide the bar. So right here, we have the sample of the size of the brush, to which you can visibly see as you adjust the size 
up and down, and the opacity. See how it's getting lighter and darker, lighter and darker. Okay, so that's a really good handy way to know exactly where your brush settings are. Okay, so to click out of this, you just need to poke somewhere outside of this uh, window and then it'll exit out. In addition to having those options there, there are these little gray flat cylinders on the side of this brush bar, which also coincides and acts as changing your size and changing your opacity. So if you don't want to open a new window and you kind of want to just quickly access that, you have that right here. Okay. So if I draw something on my page, you will now see that my brush is acting like so. Right? Pretty neat. Okay. So to get rid of anything that you have drawn and not erase, we have our undo function right up here, which is an arrow that points to the left. Get very used to this particular tool because you will be doing a lot of undoing as you make projects in the future. So it's a great way to quickly get rid of what you have drawn without manually erasing it, all right? Which your eraser brushes are located down here at the very bottom, okay? So for just like a little practice exercise to kind of get familiar with the tools before we start our project for this lesson, let's go ahead and take our brush and just draw like a black circular shape right in the middle, like that, okay? And this black circular shape is going to help us really understand how to navigate sketchbook by using a bunch of different tools onto this little shape, all right? Now, as I said earlier, on top of using your drawing stylus to navigate and manipulate um, the tools on sketchbook, you can also use your fingers. Now, how to use your fingers is to enlarge and shrink your project. So right now, your whole screen is covered by your page, all right? The edges are concealed and you can't know or see how big your project actually is. So if you take your fingers and pinch inwards, like so, you'll then be able to see the border of your project. And then if you pinch outwards, like so, you can make it grow again, which is really helpful for if you wanna zoom in on your project. So usually when I open a new project, I like to zoom out so I can see the edges just so I know whatever I'm sketching is proportional to the size of my page, all right? Additionally, you can rotate it with your fingers as well just by taking your fingers, holding it down on your tablet and just turning them like so. All right, now we have drawn something on our said layer. So let's jump into layers before we play more with the tools at the top, okay? Now our layers are located right here on the right-hand side, okay? And it's pretty easy to see because whatever you draw inside of that said layer will show up in the corresponding layer. To make another layer, you just hit this plus icon right here at the top of this toolbar. So let's go ahead and click that. Boop. All right, so now we have a new layer and nothing's inside of it, all right? So to understand exactly how layers work, let's go ahead and select a new color, which is located right here. Okay, so our current color is selected is black. So if I poke on this circle, you're going to get this new window, which has your color wheel in it, all right? This outer ring is your color wheel, where you get to choose your colors. And this inner diamond is the saturation of that said color. So right now I have orange, and orange is located right here. And if you see the saturation, it takes away the color. And on the left-hand side, it goes all the way to gray. And on the top, you're adding white into that orange. And on the bottom, you're adding black into that orange. So that's how this middle diamond works. All right, so let's go ahead and select orange. So I'm going to select this circle right here and drag it all the way to the right-hand side. So I have the most amount of orange. And just like our brush, when we were changing the size and the opacity, you get to see in real time the color changing, which is really nice. Okay, poke outside of the window to exit that. Now, before I get ahead of myself, this small little window is an optional window. It's called the double puck, which allows you to have your brush selection and your color wheel really quickly to uh, really easy to navigate and have around the corner because you can actually take your stylus and manually move this around to wherever you need to. 
If you don't see this on your iPad, how exactly you get this to show up is down here in the circular object. If you poke it, it's going to open this window and right here, something that looks like a tab on a soda can is your double puck. So I poke that, my double puck will disappear. If I poke it again, it will reappear. I like having it just so that way it's easy to access my color wheel and my brush options kind of all in one. Now, going back into this project, let's go ahead and draw an orange circle right on top of this black circle. Okay. And I'm going to show you exactly how layers work. Now, our current layer that we have selected is highlighted in blue and it's the one on top, okay? So keep in mind that whenever you're making projects and you're playing around with layers, that you wanna be sure you have the correct layer selected. Now these two objects, this orange splotch and this black splotch are on two different layers. Now to know exactly that how that is working and if that's true, if you go right here on the top left hand corner, this is where we get to see the visibility of that layer and it's represented by an eyeball. So if I poke this eyeball, a slash is going to go right through it, and then my orange splotch is going to vanish. But my black splotch is still visible because it's on a different layer and I didn't turn it off. All right, so if I touch the eyeball again, it'll reappear. Turn off and on, off and on. Now, these are both on the same layer. Both would disappear, but since we drew them on top of each other, we really have no way of knowing. So right now, Let's go ahead and learn the transform tool so we can move this orange splotch to the side so we can see both the orange and the black splotch next to each other. Okay, now our transform tool is located right here. It's represented by these four arrows that kind of look like a compass. So if we click on that, it's gonna take all of our toolbars and push them aside and open up a new window. Now, there are all these functions up here, but we're not going to get into that. I'll let you explore that on your own time. Right now, what we want to play around with is moving the object around by using our drawing utensil. Like so, you hold it down, you get to manually move what exists on that layer around. Okay. And if you recall how we shrunk and grew our page, you take your fingers and do the same movement, you can do the same thing for what exists inside of that layer. So you see how the page is not changing in size and only what we drew is. So this is really helpful for if you drew something and you want to center it perfectly or perhaps you want to change its location. Maybe you want to turn it around, make it bigger, make it smaller, all right? This is really helpful for when you're starting out your sketch before you go into the fine details and you just want to organize and place things where you want them to be, okay? So like I said earlier, let's just put these two objects next to each other like so, okay? And once you're done, just hit done right here at the top window, okay? Like so. And now we can see both objects. And if we click the eyeball on their corresponding layers, we can see that they're appearing and reappearing separately, okay? Now, let's talk about what this icon is at the bottom left, this lock icon, okay? This lock icon is called an alpha lock, all right? Now an alpha lock means that it basically locks all the space that you did not draw in. So right now on this layer, the only space that we drew in is this orange spot right here. Everything outside of it doesn't exist. We haven't drawn in it yet, so there's no space that exists in there. So let's go ahead and hit this lock icon, okay? And right now, everything is locked. So how do I know that this is working? So let's hit this lock, kinda lock icon again, and let's quickly change the color of our brush. So let's just change it to like, let's just change it to gray, okay? Let's choose the third color outside the window. So right now on this layer that I have selected where the orange splotch is, I'm allowed to draw outside and anywhere I want, okay? So let's quickly undo that. But if I hit this lock icon, now, I can only draw inside of what already exists, which is the orange splotch, like so. 
okay? And I can't do it on the black splotch because it is on a separate layer, okay? So this alpha lock function is a layer specific function. It will only work on that one layer. So if you wanna alpha lock the black splotch, you have to reselect the layer that the black splotch is on and hit alpha lock, okay? So I'll undo that. I'll go back into my now gray splotch and hit the alpha lock button so it's no longer locked. Okay, so now I can draw outside again. This is incredibly useful for if you draw a general shape or outline of something and you wanna design a pattern in it and not worry about coloring outside of the lines. All right, but you have to keep in mind that you have to pay attention to whether that layer is locked or not. Oftentimes we get so absorbed into our projects that we don't notice or realize that certain things are locked or certain functions are turned on or off. All right, so this is a general overview of some of the functions that we will learn. And we'll go more into detail with the small project that we're going to get into in just a bit. So once again, on the left hand side, this is our brush library. Okay, and currently we have our fountain pen selected. And these two flat gray ovals plays with the brush size and the opacity. All right, our top toolbar up here is kind of all of our little functions. I'll let you explore those on your own. If I get too into those, this video will be way longer than it needs to be. But the tools that we did learn are right here. How do we make a new project? This is the icon right here. The undo tool, okay. Now the arrow clicking to the right side or facing to the right side is the redo tool. So if you undo too much, if you hit this icon, it'll turn back on and bring back whatever it is that you undid, all right? So they work as opposites. And the last tool that we learned up here was a transform tool where you get to manually manipulate objects in real time, okay? And lastly, we learned about our layers located right here. We learned how to hide and unhide our layers, how to make a new layer, how to alpha lock, and how to basically just kind of play around and move around with your layers, okay? So I am quickly going to clear out everything on this project. So to do that, you just click the layer and it's gonna open this ginormous menu, okay? And there are only some functions we need to learn, but right now I'm just gonna hit delete to get rid of this layer. And for this one, I'm just gonna clear out everything so my project is in its base form again, all right? The next part of today's lesson is to create artwork. So we're going to take what you have learned and we're going to apply it and create this pudding sketch right here. All right. So there are several layers that we're going to make. We're going to play around with some brushes. We're also going to play around with some transforming and a, quite a bit of not too much, but it's some new tools that are very specific to just this art project. Okay. Now, if at any point you miss a step or you didn't quite see the instructions, definitely just kind of go back, pause the video, um, pay attention to where my cursor is. I tried to circle the tools that we are using so that way it's easier for you to understand and see where it is that we are. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started and let's make this little pudding. In the first part of this video, you learned the basics of brushes, layers, and some of the tools. Now for the purpose of this pudding, um, little art piece that we're going to make, I'm also going to introduce new tools as well. The reason I didn't introduce them at first is because some of the tools that we're going to introduce now are very specific to just this project. All right. And you can go ahead and apply them however you'd like for your own future projects. So let's go ahead with the same brush, the fountain pen, let's go ahead and change some of the settings. All right. So the first thing we need to do is kind of sketch out and get the general shape of that pudding. So I'm going to change the color to black and bring down the size of my brush, all right? So if I hit the circle right here for the color, I'm just gonna slide it down to black, okay? Poke outside to exit. And if I click on the sides of the brush, I'm just gonna bring it down, okay? Cause I don't wanna sketch in like really thick lines. I kinda wanna use thin lines for this, okay? And I always do like a little test run just to see where my brush size is. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Now these sketch lines aren't going to show up at the end because we're going for a slightly realistic looking pudding. So we just need these sketch lines temporarily. 
Now, for the pudding, we want to create a nice oval shape. Now, we could manually draw it, but there are some lumps and kinks that the human you know, movement kind of catches and the sketchbook catches it as well. So let me just quickly undo that. There is a tool in here that we can use to quickly create an oval and that's located right here. All right, represented by this square and this circle. This is the draw style tool. All right, so if I click on this icon, it's going to open a small menu where you can make lines, circles and ovals, rectangles and squares. So I'm gonna click on this middle one right here to get that oval, okay? Let's so select that. Now, to show you what it looks like, if you take your draw st drawing stylus and you start somewhere and you drag it across, you'll see a dotted line like that. So it kind of shows you what the object will look like before you let go and it appears like so. Okay, so let's do that again. So I'll just undo that. You take your stylus, you put it down on your iPad and then you drag it from one point to another to grow and shrink the shape that you want. Okay, so I want it about right there. Okay, and there you go. Now, for our pudding shape, it is kind of like a conic cylinder shape. So we also need a larger oval below like that. All right, but there are two ways we can do this. We could draw another oval. So let me undo this. Or we can take this layer and duplicate it, make another one of it, all right? So I'll show you how to do that. So you go to your layers right here. So you poke this layer that is already selected and you're gonna open that new window that we briefly went over. And on the top right-hand side of this window, it's gonna have a duplicate function, okay? And you pretty much can guess, if I hit this, it's going to duplicate this layer. So now I have two ovals. And they're stacked right on top of each other, so it doesn't really look like anything happened. But there are two ovals now. And how you can check that is by going to your transform tool right here and moving that new oval down and making it bigger, like so. OK, so now you have an oval shape that is generally around the same size and thickness as well. So without actually having to draw a new oval and kind of making sure that it's at the same, you know, shape. All right, so I'm gonna hit done and exit out. Okay. Alrighty. Now we can take these two oval layers and kind of put them together. So in that layer menu, when we click the layer after it's been selected, we can use this function called merge. Okay, and what it does is it takes two layers and it merges them together. So what exists on both layers exists on one now. Now, when you wanna do merging, if you see the icon, there's an arrow pointing down, it merges the top layer downwards. It never merges downwards or it never merges upwards, it always merges downwards. So you always wanna select the top layer and then merge it down. Okay, like so. Okay, now they are both on the same layer now. Okay, now we can resume and kind of get the sketch of our pudding out. So let's go back into our draw style tool, select the line, and let's quickly connect these two ovals with lines. So we start right here on this side, connect that down like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just our little sketch layer. We just want to get the journal shape. We go to the other side and connect those two. Like that. All right. Now you got the journal shape. Good work. Perfect. Now we have our pudding shape. Now, what we want to do is duplicate this sketch. Okay. And I'll show you why. And I'll also explain why. So let's go ahead and select this layer and duplicate it and reselect the bottom layer. Now, the reason we're duplicating this line layer is because we still need our sketch for when we color and shade it in, all right? Because if we fill in everything, we have to kind of guess where that general shape is, where these ovals are. So for now, let's go ahead and make a duplicate of the sketch, kind of as like a little save point if we mess up, 
All right, so if we mess up when we color this in, you know, it's really hard to go back. So as long as we have another layer with just the sketch in there, we can always go back to it if we messed up the other layer too much or something. So we have the bottom layer selected. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn off this layer on top. We're not going to need it quite just yet. So we're going to hit the eyeball and then just turn it off. It's going to look like nothing's happened. All right, now we're going to introduce a new tool and it's called the fill bucket tool or the fill tool. And this right here, looks like a paint bucket, allows us to quickly fill in spaces that are closed by lines, all right? So when you did the lines right here on the sides to connect these ovals together, you really have to make sure that they're connected because the smallest gap that exists, the fill bucket tool is gonna seep out and color everything, all right? So go ahead and quickly double check, make sure that those lines are closed. I'll give you some time. Okay, you can always pause the video. Now, when you're ready, let's go ahead and select the fill bucket tool. Okay, now there are many different functions, but the thing that we need is this first icon right here, which kind of fills everything in it as a solid color. The other two icons kind of make gradients, transitions from one color to the next. So we won't need those. We only need it all filled in nice and flat. So for our pudding, we need to select the color. Otherwise our pudding is gonna come out black. So if I poke that, black. So I'm going to undo that. So I'm going to go right here and change our color to a nice orange or a yellowish orange, whatever you want. It's your pudding. You can change it to whatever color you want. So I'll move it up a little bit so it's not too vibrant. Okay, just like so. Now, if I click inside, poke, 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 it automatically fills in my object like so. All right, pretty neat. That's all you really need to do. Okay, once you have finished that, alpha lock this layer. Okay, so we alpha locked our layer. Now the reason we alpha locked it is so that way we can color in and get rid of these black lines. Okay, just like so. Now our brush is still really thin, so you wanna bring up the size of your brush and quickly just color in everything like that. Kind of covering it up. Okay, so now it's a solid orange pudding shape. And keep the alpha lock on because we're gonna continue to color and we don't wanna color outside of it. So we wanna remain alpha locked. And if we turn this layer back on, we still have our sketch layer to reference the general area at which our shading will occur. Okay, so we can turn that back on, but now we know that the sketch is on a separate layer, all right? So this bottom layer is all filled in for the color and this top layer is just for the line work, okay? Now, we still have our bottom layer selected. Let's go ahead and quickly do some light shading. Okay, so we're going to make the highlights or the reflective sheen on this pudding because right now it's a really flat solid color. So we are actually going to switch over into a different brush. All right. The brush is the airbrush or the flow airbrush right here. Okay, so if I select that and if I poke it again, you'll kind of see that it's very soft and very blurry. That's what the flow airbrush is. So you can bring up the opacity all the way to 100. And the size, well, it's kind of hard to see because the size is so large. You see how large that number is? In this bar where it's changing the size, it's kind of hard to see. So what I like to do is I actually like to play with the small um, gray cylinder on the side because it actually shows the radius or the diameter and the whole circumference of that circle changing. So I get to really judge the size of my brush right here. So I need it about maybe that size. Okay. Now to make the highlight of this pudding, we need to select our orange color and bring it back, bring it up. So it's slightly brighter like that. Okay. All right. So let's say our light source is coming from the left-hand side. So we need to color this side of our pudding. So as you can see, the airbrush is now coloring a nice and soft color like so. So we're going to color some of this left side and go around the top like that. 
And let's add a little light reflection on the right hand side, but not go all the way to the edge. Okay. Color it nice and soft. Now, if you're using like an Apple Pencil or with a stylus that has a strong sensitivity, how hard you press down will also determine the opacity and, you know, the way in which your brush looks. So definitely consider controlling how hard you press down as well. Okay, so that's a general shading for our pudding. Now let's add in some shadows. So we need to go on the opposite end. So we're going to go back to our color wheel and make that orange slightly darker like that. So it almost comes off brown. And then we're going to add a little bit at the top, like so, right here, and right here at the bottom. Okay, just going to add that in. And a little bit at the bottom. Given that this pudding is a little bit more realistic, the color shifts are really subtle as well, something like that. Okay, nice, very nice. Okay, so if I turn off my sketch layer, now I have a better idea of what my pudding looks like. Pretty cool, right? Okay, and we're almost done. We just need to add where the light will reflect off the pudding to kind of give it its shine. And then for the most part, we'll be done with this first little sketch and basically your first art project in sketchbook. All right. <clears throat> so we won't need that sketch layer anymore unless you really wanted to go around and refine some areas. But for now, this is pretty much like in a good spot. So we're just going to hide the sketch layer, but not delete it in case you want it for later. So right now, we're going to make a new layer by hitting the plus icon. Oops, hit it twice. So I'll just delete one. OK. Now, a function that I did not explain, but I'll quickly go over, is you can actually move these layers around. So if you select the highlighted layer by holding it down with your stylus, it'll grow in size like so. And you get to move it around your layers and organize them, which is pretty cool. So let's go back. We just need it in the middle. Because right now, it's the top layer because the sketch layer is hiding or hidden away. So even though it's at the top, it's not showing. So it doesn't matter. OK. So the color we need is white. So let's go ahead and change our color to white. And we're actually going to change our brush to the primary pencil, which is at the very top. It's the first brush in the brush library. So let's go ahead and select that. OK, if you poke it again, You'll see size and opacity once again. And what I like about the primary pencil is it's not as sharp as the fountain pen, but it's not as soft as the airbrush. So it's like a little nice in-between brush that I like to use. OK. So we have that brush selected. Let's go ahead and test it out. So ah, very nice. Nice and soft. And it goes along with how I control the pressure. So I'm pressing lightly. So now it's like very faded. And if I press harder, it goes down darker, which is nice for me to control the reflective sheen on this pudding. OK, so let me undo that. OK, so we're going to add a strip of reflective light right here and a little bit right here. OK, so just watch carefully. We're just going to add in some splotches of white right here. And then we're going to bring it down like that. OK, almost a little bit random. You see how that kind of skips some areas. Some of that little line are a little bit brighter and some are more faded. OK, we're going to add a little bit right here. It's OK. Yours doesn't have to be exact like mine. It's just showing the reflection of light. So it doesn't need to have the exact shape, right? It just needs to be in the right location, that's all. OK. just like so. Okay, and you can always go back in, make some areas more white, like so, or lighter. Now, if you made it too white, you can always use this eraser right here, which is the textured eraser, which erases almost, it's almost like the opposite of the primary pencil. It draws down and it takes away in a nice soft manner. 
Thanks, let me undo that. So if you drew in areas and you pushed a little bit too far, you can take the texture eraser and kind of erase some areas away from it like that. Okay. All right, congratulations. You have learned how to use some of the basic functions in Sketchbook and you came through and finished our first of three lessons. Let's quickly go over what will happen in the next lesson. All right, so in part two of our three lesson series for intro to digital illustration, we will go over the specific functions that layers can have. All right, so we'll focus specifically on layers and make a small little art project where you will play around with that. So we'll talk about what layers are, we'll explore more in depth how to use layers, and we'll create a nice little colored landscape using the sketchbook layers. All right, so thank you for joining me on our first of three intro to digital illustration lessons and i hope to see you for part two where we'll continue on and you know play around with sketchbook a little bit more thank you and see you later